when you create a workbook with a large number of worksheets. It's very useful to create a worksheet with a list of all sheet names. You may call it a table of contents or an index. And then create a forward and backward navigation from the index to different worksheets and back. I'm Nabil Murad. There are three different ways of doing this, either by using functions, by using a VBA code, or by using Power Query. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below the video. Make sure you watch the three tutorials and let me know in a comment which method you find easier for you. In this tutorial, I'm using Power Query. You will find below this video links to the two other methods. Here is my Excel start file. You can download that file by clicking on the link below the video. And in this file I have multiple worksheets and I inserted a new worksheet at the beginning. I named it index and I would like to extract a list of all the worksheet names in column A of this worksheet. And then I would like to be able to create a forward and backward navigation to and from the different worksheets. So let's get started. To go to Power Query, I click on the Data tab, and I'm going to click on the down arrow for New Query, from File, and then from Workbook. When I click on From Workbook, I will have to navigate to the location of the workbook. I select it, and then hit Import. My navigator window opens, and in the navigator window I can see the list of the different worksheets available in this workbook, but I'll go up at the top and select the name of the workbook itself. I want to bring this data and I want to clean it and transform it, so I click on Transform Data to go to my Power Query Editor. The Power Query Editor window opens, and I start to the right side by giving a name to my query, and let's name it List of Sheets. When I hit Enter, that doesn't add any step to the applied steps. In my query editor, I have multiple columns. The leftmost is the name of the worksheet. Among the columns, I have a kind column. But because in this workbook, I do have some defined name, I might have some filtered ranges, I have some print area. So in the kind column, I have different types of objects. And because I just want to import sheets, I don't want defined names, I don't want filtered ranges, I don't want print areas. So I need to filter the kind to exclude everything other than sheet. So when I click on the down arrow, hover over text filter and say equals, and I'll be typing in the filter dialog box, I'll be typing sheet. Remember, it's case sensitive, the S should be capitalized. So when I hit OK, it excludes anything which is not a sheet. Next thing I would like to do, I want to go to the name column. And in the name column, I don't want to include the index worksheet in which I'll be extracting the list of sheet names. So I want to filter that as well. So I click on the down arrow for name, hover over text filters. And from the flyout menu, I'll be selecting does not equal and I type index and hit OK. After excluding the index worksheet, I would like to rename this column, so I'll be typing sheet names. All the steps are being recorded in the applied steps on the right side of my query editor. One final thing, and this is a personal preference, if you want the worksheets in the same order they appear in the workbook, then you keep it the way it is. Otherwise, you can sort the different worksheets and get an alphabetical listing of the sheet names. So I'm going to sort the worksheets, and now I have them alphabetically. In case I have a huge list of worksheets, it will be easier to locate a specific one. My next step is to get rid of the other columns because all what I want is the sheet names. So I right click and say remove other columns. Now I'm ready to send it back to Excel. So on the Home tab, I click on Close and Load, Close and Load 2. In the Load 2, I want to dump it in the index worksheet. So I select existing worksheet, cell A1 is selected. So when I hit Load, here you go. It brings the list of the different worksheets sorted alphabetically. I'm going to close the workbook queries. And now I need to create another column. We are preparing for the forward and backward navigation. So let's give it a name. Go to worksheet. To build a forward navigation, you can use a hyperlink function to create link that goes to a cell somewhere within the current workbook. The hyperlink function requires two arguments, a link location which means a destination, and optionally a friendly name. The link location must follow the pattern book name, sheet name, 
in single quotations, an exclamation mark, that is cell reference. The trick is to add the pound sign at the start instead of the book name. While building this structure inside the hyperlink function, using the AND joining operator, SHIFT 7 on the keyboard. To create a backward navigation that jumps from any sheet back to cell A1 in the index of sheets, I use another hyperlink function. Now, let's do it in Excel. And let's start creating our hyperlink function. Equal hyperlink, and the hyperlink function has two arguments. The first one is the destination. So I need to provide the workbook name, followed by the worksheet name, both of them included in single quotation, followed by an exclamation mark, and then the cell reference in the destination. In the hyperlink function, I'm going to build this structure by using the AND operator, the joining operator of Excel Shift 7 on my keyboard. So I type equal hyperlink. And then in double quotation, I type a pound sign, single quotation, and double quote. And then I want to join it, so I use Shift 7 on my keyboard. I want to join it to the worksheet name. And by the way, the pound sign is to replace the workbook name. And now I want to join it one more time by using the joining operator. In double quotation, I'll be typing a single quotation, an exclamation mark, cell A1, the destination, and close the double quote. The second argument of the hyperlink function is a friendly name, because this hyperlink will be too long, so I'll be typing a comma. And for the friendly name, I just want the worksheet name, so I click on it, close the bracket and hit enter, and I would have created my forward navigation. Let's test. When I click on one of the links, it takes me to the specific worksheet. Now I want to go back and create a backward navigation. When I jump to a distant worksheet, I want to be able to go back to my index one more time. And to do this, I'm going to select the worksheet immediately after the index by clicking on it. That's the leftmost. And then I want to group the worksheets all together to reveal the last one. I click on the right pointing arrow in the navigation bar, press Control and click to go to the very end. And before clicking on the last one, I press the Shift key and click on the rightmost. So I'm activating the left most and then before clicking on the right most I press the shift key now I'm grouping all the worksheets together in cell a1 I'll be creating the function that takes me back so let's create this hyperlink function equal hyperlink and then I hit tab in double quotation I'm typing a pound sign single quotation and then double quote I want to join I want to join to what in double quotes I'll be typing the name of the worksheet index followed by a single quotation an exclamation mark, cell A1, that's the destination, and close the double quotes. To create a user-friendly name, I type a comma, and then for the user-friendly name, in double quotes, I'll be typing index. Let's close the bracket, and let's hit enter. Now I should have created a forward and backward navigation. I don't even need to right-click and say ungroup sheets. Why? Because I can simply ungroup them by clicking on the link while testing it, and my link is working just fine. Let's go to autofill, and then let's click on A1 to go back to my index. If I click on Did You Watch, it takes me to this worksheet. I created for you some thumbnails for some of my interesting video tutorials. I can go back by clicking on Index and my forward and backward navigation is working just fine. In this tutorial, we learned how to create an index of sheet names by using Power Query. Make sure you watch the videos for the two other methods by following the link in the description below. And let me know in a comment which method you prefer. If you enjoyed this training video, like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you next time.